Welcome to the On Texas Football Baseball Preview. I'm Blake Monroe, where today I'm joined by C.J. Vogel and Drew Bishop. Drew pitched for Texas from 2005 through 2008 and then became the Director of Baseball Operations for the Longhorns from 2009 to 2021. Now, he's Five Tools Baseball Director of Scouting, and today he's going to be going in-depth with us uh, on this year's Texas team and what fans can expect. Drew, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, excited to be here. Never Always like talking about the horns. <laughs> well, uh, you know, last season, Texas, they lose to Stanford in the Super Regional. Obviously, they've lost some players to graduation, the portal, obviously the draft as well. But I know we're going to deep dive into this team. But in a nutshell, what can Horns fans expect this year? Yeah, um, you know, I, I think the strength of the team's probably going to be the offense, uh, just based on returning guys. Um, there's a lot of bats with a lot of experience. Obviously, having uh, Tulo back in the in the fold helps. Um, you know, obviously he's doing some stuff in the background, uh, but his presence will be a big plus uh, on the offensive and defensive side. Um, you know, there's some some unknown on the pitching staff, but you know, I think as as we kind of creep towards the season, I think you're starting to see some more some more options pop up. I think which will be intriguing. Um, you know, I think this is probably a team that uh, it'll take a little bit of time to sort out who goes where uh, on the, on the pitching side of things, but the, on the plus side, there's options. Um, you know, that's, that's always the, that's always the plus this time of the year. You know, it's, it, it's a pretty lonely feeling if you don't have the options that I think we'll have, um, you know, especially coming out of the bullpen uh, you know, it'll take, like I said, it'll take, I think it'll take some time for it to sort itself out and see who goes in what spots. Um, Cause there's a lot of new and a lot of, inexperienced guys but uh having a couple of guys back you know with uh, Shaw um I think that's going to be a really big deal um you know I think he's going to do a really good job it sounds like he's from a personality standpoint kind of taking over as the leader of the bullpen um and I think he relishes that role and and likes the ball in big moments yeah Drew I wanted to start on the offense side of the ball you mentioned that feels like that's going to be the strength of the team yeah. Took a bit of a hit when Luke Storms took a step away from baseball. Uh, that mm -hmm. first base spot, now a little bit up in the air. Where do you see Texas going from there? And what kind of, uh, you know, kind of fill of that hole do you expect from them to ensure that one first base maintains a plus at the offensive side of the ball? And also if they move around the, the center field or, or outfield, where, where, where does the dominoes fall from, from that? I, you know, just, it, it's a nice little option to have in your back pocket to be able to slide Jared Thomas back over there to first base. Um, you know, we know what we've got with him. I mean, I, shoot, I've seen we, – I remember JT coming to a camp when he was a freshman, and you knew then that he was going to be an elite defensive player. Um, so, you know, having to move him back to first, I think, you know, he can play over there in his sleep. Um, so that's a nice card to have in your back pocket. Um you know, in, in some ways, I think that might get your most talented roster on the field or most talented lineup on the field um, by putting uh, Tommy Farmer in center and Will Gasparino out there as well. Um, those are two obviously extremely talented. Um, you know, obviously Gasparino came in as the most heralded recruit of the bunch, um, has a background in baseball, obviously with his dad being the scouting director for the Dodgers, uh, you know, just an elite talent. You know, there's a lot of upside there, um, you know, so, you know, he's a guy that he, he might be in the mix with like a guy like Drew Stubbs was back when I played. I mean, from an athletic standpoint, I don't know if he's as straight line fast as Drew was, but um, a lot of the things that people said about Drew back then are things that you hear said about Will. Um, and then Tommy, I mean, Tommy might be the most athletic guy on the team. Uh, I mean, he can really run uh, just supreme athlete. And then, you know, I mean, it's starting to play itself out. But Max Ballou uh, is a guy, too, that's really, really come on with the bat. Um, and then you've got Cummings and Seth Wurchan as options, too. So, you know, I, from a prospect standpoint, I think it would have been beneficial for JT to be out in center field. Uh, but from a from a team and lineup standpoint, you know, it probably makes sense to move him back to first. That's probably the easiest thing to do. Um you know, and there's still some opportunity, you know, guys like uh, Nick Sanders may get some chances at first base because, you know, we mentioned Gasparino and Farmer, uh, but Sanders is a guy that potential wise with the bat may be as good as any of them from the freshman group. Um, 
and first base is probably the best spot for him to get a chance. You know, I imagine he'll get some ABs uh, in a DH spot at some point too. Uh, but he may just prove to be too talented to to not have him in the lineup. Um, and and two, you know, I know early on we may do some mixing and matching uh, with when we see the left and right matchups. Uh, you know, we're Chan's left-handed hitter, Baloo's a left-handed hitter, Cummings is a right-handed hitter, and you know, shoot, Cummings. Every time that the lights are on, he seems to hit a home run, you know, hitting the home run in the alumni game then had a big home run in the ball world series. So um, they've got options out in the outfield. You know, I think that's, that's the key with it. Um, I think you're offensively where we'll be a little bit more set um, as far as lineups than we will as far the shifting back and forth uh, early that we might see. Um, but, you know, I think, the, again, there's there's lots of options, um, and it, you know, you never know because there's gonna you're gonna be replacing Dylan Campbell, obviously, which will be tough. Uh, you're replacing Eric Kennedy, who was there for a long time, and you know, for some of the freshmen, it just takes a while, you know. So you never know. So there there may be some stretches where, you know, we're we're tinkering with guys or giving guys a day off here and there based on a left right matchup with the pitcher. Um, but the exciting thing is is there's options, um, and then you, you know you got a guy like Porter Brown who who's a known commodity uh, that you know what you're going to get from him. And um, that's some elite offensive upside there for, for the offense. I'm glad you mentioned Porter Brown. I wanted to talk about him and Peyton Powell, both of those yeah. guys, red shirt seniors. How big was it for Texas to get both of those guys back in the fold for this season? Oh, it's huge. Um, you know, you can't underestimate experience um, at this level. I mean, it's a, it's a really big deal. And, you know, it's it's something that at a lot of the top programs you don't have a, a lot of because those guys are drafted so often. Um, but, man, I mean, just knowing that you can pencil in a guy like that that's seen everything over the course of a couple of years, um, you know, a lot of people know the story of Peyton Powell. Uh, you know, I remember him coming in, and, and he's a great example of, like, having a lot of talent and just the situation being a lot. Like, it's – people don't understand that that there's a huge adjustment that a lot of these kids have to make, uh, you know, whether it's their lifestyle as far as like moving to a big city or, you know, instead of having 20 people in the stands, there's, you know, 10,000 like that, that can be an adjustment for people. Um, And, you know, from having that experience, uh, it it matters a lot, Uh, especially early on in the season. um, There's some steadying, uh, effects to it, you know, having those guys, you know, that have been there, you know, they're, they're not going to freak out if they go over three in the first game, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, there's, cause you know, at that level, it's going to happen. So that a lot of times that's what dictates the, the success of these freshmen is how they adjust, um, you know, cause talent wise, if you've made it to a place like Texas, you're, you're probably pretty good and you're going to be talented enough to compete with anybody, but you know, can you make an adjustment when the scouting report gets out on you or, you know, how are you going to respond to more people in the stands or, you know, facing a guy that, you know, might be 24 on the mound that stuff might not be as good as some of the stuff that you've hit in your life, but you know, that guy knows how to pitch and that can be just, it, it's just part of the adjustment that a freshman and a guy without experience has to make. Um, but yeah, I mean, the having those guys in the lineup is huge. Uh, you know, when you, when you know what you're getting with those guys with different types of at bats, knowing how, you know, knowing their signals of when they're, when they need a break, when they need a day off, you know, that that's very helpful to a coach as well. Uh, It certainly feels like this lineup will be balanced in terms of youngsters to upperclassmen. Uh, Something that, you know, you hope to see, especially when the infiltration of young talent can help complement that of the older guys around. Uh, we know some of the older guys will be back on campus and you know what they can bring. But there's a spot right, right now in this lineup where you don't know a whole lot of what you're going to get. And that, that, I think that's catcher. You know, yeah. you get Kimball Sch- uh, Schlusser back uh, on the field. What can you expect from not only him, but that position in its entirety as you kind of have to step up and replace a lot from 2023? Yeah. Uh, you know, that obviously that's a, that's a place where we're going to have a new person, but you know, at this time last year, we didn't know a whole lot about what we were going to get from Garrett Gilnett. And obviously that went well. Um, and you know, the tricky part about catcher too, is that a lot of things that are really valuable at that position, they don't show up in a box score. So, 
you know, I think that's, that's one thing you have to pay attention to when you're evaluating how these guys are doing. Um, you know, luckily, and in some ways, unfortunately for Texas teams, you know, the, the fan base is extremely educated. So they, they, they do know a little bit about what they're looking for, but you know, I, the thing is, is if you catch the ball and you're not a problem back there and you can, and you can have some, uh, control of the pitching staff, that's going to be the stuff that matters. Um, you know, I know Galvan was a very highly rated prospect coming out of Sinton. Um, and you know, the hope is that he can take off too. So you've got options. Um, I mean, I shoot, I remember, I don't, I couldn't tell you what, which year it was, but you know, we lost, uh, DJ must've been, it was 19. So we, we lost DJ Petrinsky to a shoulder injury. Then, you know, Michael McCann went from being the backup to the starter and then he went down and was out and you know we almost had to go get someone off the street and that's a very lonely feeling and I that that's not the feeling that I know that the the team has now you know I know they think they they have guys that can do the job um and you know for both of those guys you know if they get the more playing time they get you know they may just take off themselves you know and th- that's the the positive thing is that you've got an older guy like Schusler um who's been in the program, who knows what to do. Um, he's been with some of these pitchers before, so he knows how to handle them. And then Galvan, like we mentioned, is a, a big talent. So, you know, hoping something clicks for him, um, you know, and you may, be, you may get in a spot too where you're changing catchers every so often just based on who the pitcher is, not necessarily in game, but, um, you know, time to time when you're in these situations that you don't have one proven commodity – you may have a situation where LeBaron likes one guy or uh, Cody Howard or Charlie Hurley, like another guy or Tanner Witt like, favors one guy more than the other. So, you know, there may be some mix- mixing and matching early in the season uh, at that position too. But again, having the options there um, that, that that's what matters the most. And, you know, as long as they're catching the ball and allowing the pitching staff to be comfortable and throw what, they want to throw in any given situation, that's going to be what matters most from that spot because offensively you're not going to need a whole lot from that spot. Um, you know, so the way I would look at it, I mean, just like any roster construction I've ever, you know, favored is any offense you get from the catching position is a bonus. Um, yeah. And that's not to say these guys won't provide any, uh, I know Galvan can hit, I know he, I've seen it. So um yeah, the, the good the good thing is there's options there. Yeah, you mentioned that 2019 circle of catchers, and you almost had to go get a guy off the street. That was almost me. Yeah, I, think I actually yeah. sent you and uh, Vinny an email back in the day saying I'm I'm ready to roll. So that's that's actually pretty funny to see that come completely around. Yeah, that was um that, that was a that massive was a, year. That's a lonely feeling. That is yeah, a very yeah. lonely <laughs> feeling. Because uh, yeah, because we had lo- just lost when we were at Stanford, we had just lost DJ. Um, to his like we, we kind of got the final verdict that he was going to be done and then um michael mccann took a foul ball to an unpleasant place um so we we were down it was it was not pleasant i'll say that <laughs> oh man well we can't talk about catching without talking about pitching and uh you know you've okay. mentioned wit you mentioned lbj charlie early who are some of the other guys that texas fans need to be aware of who do you feel like is really going to take that next step in terms of pitching this season? Yeah. So I think, you know, I, I think everyone seems to be happy with Cody Howard. Um, you know, he's a guy that is going to ch- have a chance to have a bigger role this year. Max Grubbs, Cole Selvig are going to be some guys that are kind of in the mix for that Tuesday or middle relief spot. Um, on the, on the relief pitching side, getting Luke Harrison back will be a big deal. Um, you know, again, having that, that experience he's been there he's gotten some big outs for our program uh i think they're going to look to him having him and shaw back will be a huge huge settling factor uh for the bullpen uh gage bame has big stuff uh fontenot has really big stuff if those guys can you know be consistent you know i think that's that was kind of the the tricky part last year was they just lacked some consistency it's it's tough when you're you don't know what you're going to get from any given guy when you put him out there uh and you know it took us some time to settle into roles um so if you can get some consistency out of bame fontenot 
Um, you know, you have some freshmen in Easton Toomey's, uh, Hudson Hamilton that have done well at times uh, throughout the fall and, and early in the spring. Um, those are going to be some guys, you know, and, you know, another adjustment thing, you know, we talked about it some with the hitting, you know, pitching, almost all these guys have started exclusively um, in their careers. So just getting adjusted, you know, because my first, let's see, from 09 through, I guess, 16, uh, I spent most of my time in the bullpen answering the phone and getting guys ready and stuff like that. Um, so I've seen that adjustment. You know, the, the one thing that a lot of those guys have to learn is it's like, hey, you have to con- you have to pay attention to the number of pitches you're throwing because, you know, we may warm you up and you may not go in, right? And a lot of these guys are used to warming up as a starter where they're throwing 15, 20, 30 pitches. And, you know, it, it gets to the point where a lot of the older guys will throw five or six balls and they're ready, right? And some of the, old- the younger kids want to go through their whole arm care routine and all that kind of stuff, and it's just not – that's just not the way it works at this level when you're coming out of the pen. You know, a lot of times it's not super scripted. Um, So just having that adjustment for those young guys that'll be coming out of the pen for the first time in their life. That's something that I always pay attention to as well, just because it's, it's different. Um, And, you know, it's a lot different starting a game with no outs, nobody on uh, with nobody in the stands than it is coming in in the, seventh inning with runners on base with 8,000, 10,000 people out there. So, um, you know, it'll take some time for some of them just to get in that routine. Uh, but there's some guys that have had some success. I Mentality wise, I'm a big fan of Hud, Hudson Hamilton. Um, I always have been, I think he's not afraid of the moment uh, from what I've seen. And he seemed to like the ball in big situations uh, throughout his high school career. Um, Easton Toomey's I think has got a chance with his slider uh, to be a contributor out of the pen. Um, you know, we've seen Ace Whitehead get some outs, uh, some really important outs over the course of his career. And he just has that, you know, that mentality that he's tough and he's not afraid of anything. So, and that goes a long way, you know, that makes your stuff play up in a lot of scenarios and just thinking you're good or knowing you're going to get the guy out, um, has a funny effect. So, um, but yeah, let me, stuff wise, you know, Gage, Bame, uh, Fontenot, those are guys that have a real chance to be, you know, because Fontenot was a big time prospect coming out of high school. And, you know, he's been a couple of places and, and, you know, he's finally settled here and it seems like he might be setting into more of a role. Um, if you can get an inning out of him pretty consistently, I think you're going to have uh, a lot better bullpen than I would have thought three or four months ago. You know, I think there were some, some question marks there. Um, and then, you know, on the starting side, you know, Wit, you know, there he's the X factor. You know, I mean, I think you have a guy that's been elite at one point in his career. And I'm excited to see where he goes this year because I just, you know, knowing the kid, knowing everything that he's been through, um, I, I think personally he'll find a way. You know, he'll find a way to be a, a contributing part of this team one way or another. Um, and you know, we've seen it from him. I mean, he's, he has the chance to be an elite, elite pitcher for, for the Longhorns this year. And, you know, I, I will always have a lot of respect for him, the way he handled his situation last year, because, you know, a lot of guys in that same spot, you know, could just shut it down and throw a couple of bullpens before the draft, go off, make a lot of money and move on. Um, but, you know, the team was important to Tanner. Um, and that's, that's something that a lot of people don't, you know, if you haven't been in there a lot, you don't know, you haven't seen it, but what he did to, to, to get back, to get ready, to give it a shot um, needs to be something that people understand is a really big deal. And I think, you know, hopefully he's rewarded for doing that this year and um, going out and having a good final year at Texas. Well, fellas, before we move on, I need to give a quick shout out to a Chinook seats with baseball se- season being around the corner. You got to have the essentials ready for those nine innings of fun. And by that, I mean sunflower seeds. They're a must when it comes to baseball, and Chinook Seedery has you covered. The best part is they have a great tasting variety to appease your taste buds. They've crafted the best tasting sunflower seeds on the planet, and their unique flavors are made from real foods and spices. That means real Parmesan cheese, authentic hatch chilies, freshly harvested dill, and a whole lot of, whoa, that might just be the best seed ever. 
So whether you're actually in the game or just watching it, grab a bag of Chinook. Find them in your favorite store or go online to ChinookSeedery.com and seed the day with Chinook. Thank you for sponsoring the show, Chinook. DJ, go ahead. Yeah, Drew, I know football, everything is SEC, SEC, but, you know, baseball is still ready for that, that you know, kind of old-timey Big 12 uh, schedule coming up. Is Ahead of, you know, the season right now, you can expect Texas to be competitive as you can with, you know, a, a Texas Tech or anybody along the lines of that. But is there anybody right now that you're looking at and thinking, oh, you know, they're going to have a really, really good chance uh, when it comes to winning this conference? Yeah, uh, you know, for me, I think that that top tip top group will be TCU, Texas, uh, Kansas State. Um, it's always funny. Oklahoma State's always kind of a wild card for me, just because they they have so much turnover year to year. Um, just just the way they recruit, you know, they get a, there are a lot of guys uh, from the junior college side. So, um, you know, I I never had a good feel for what they were going to be. Um, so if you told me they won the conference, it wouldn't surprise me. If you told me they finished last, it wouldn't surprise me. Um, but I think, you know, I think from a pecking order, uh, I think a lot of people are going to expect the top three or four to be Texas, TCU, Kansas State. Um, I, I actually think OU may be a little bit of a dark horse. Um, yeah. You know, I think they're going to have a lot of experience, uh, you know, guys that played in the College World Series final uh, on the offensive side. And, you know, all Longhorn fans are familiar with Skip and the the thought of him having a down pitching staff two years in a row is pretty unlikely, in my opinion. Uh, but it is going to be interesting. I think the scheduling schedule is going to have a, a big impact on on a lot of these teams um, just based on, you know, because there's a lot. I, I think there is some parity uh, across the conference, uh, especially at the top. So, you know, scheduling may play a really big role in how the final part of it shakes out. Um, you know, I, I think tech tech's a little bit of an unknown. They lost some guys on the mound. Um, so it, the health of their pitching staff and where they're playing, um, I think will dictate what kind of team they are, but they're, they're always scrappy. They're always going to find a way to win some games, score some runs. Um, and I, and I like a lot of what they have coming back. Uh, but yeah, I think – I mean, I, I would be surprised if the, the winner of the conference doesn't come out of the three of TCU, Texas, K-State, and I'm going to say Oklahoma. I just I, – I think that they're going to have a, a, a good year just because, you know, I, I know a lot of people there and I like their roster. Um, they they lost a catcher last year to – like he had, got sick for a while in the middle – I think he got mono in the middle of the season and that kind of wow. kind of put them in a slide. So, um, yeah, I think – the, those would be the four for me, the four main ones. Good deal. Well, I'm glad you brought up the schedule because, you know, I mean, Texas, year in and year out, they they play tough opponents from the get-go. This year's yep. no different. LSU, yep. uh, Vanderbilt, uh, Texas A&M even. I think Texas A&M yep. number seven, eight in most polls. So how important is it for Texas to face that competition early when you're playing in such a tough baseball conference? Uh it, you know, it's that that'll be interesting starting next year with the SEC schedule. Um, how how we decide to kind of attack that because I remember, you know, I, I was involved in scheduling in in my role before, and I remember, you know, we we always wanted to play A and M twice, uh, at least twice a year on midweeks, and you know, when I would call over there, the kind of the wording back was like, hey, we have to get wins. You know, and as much as we want to play, like it just doesn't make sense for the RPI formula to risk losing those games. Like you have to, you have to rack up some wins early. Um, so the scheduling, I think next year will start to be a little bit different. Uh, but as far as this year, you know, in, in the past, I love playing the tough schedule. Um, you know, I, there's, there's some, teams that you look at on the schedule, not necessarily this year, but in for anybody, I'm not just saying Texas and it just doesn't do a whole lot for you. You know, you may not get a lot out of it. And a lot of it depends on your roster makeup too. You know, like, is it good necessarily to, you know, have a bunch of young kids on the team, go get their brains beat in early and risk, you know, potentially losing some of those guys for the season. 
mentally. Um, you know, I, I don't, you know, I have different opinions on that than some, but, you know, I know coach Pierce has always wanted to schedule tough, but I think, you know, looking back at last year, you know, we, we had a rough stretch early on and then we had, we had that little window where it wasn't as difficult. And that's when you see guys start to get some confidence and really start playing better. So, you know, a lot of it's, uh, based in philosophy on like what matters the most. And some of it has to do with your roster construction, but, um, I don't, I I like scheduling tough. You know, I think that's, uh, you know, if a Texas team does what they're supposed to do, uh, throughout the end of the season, it's going to end up being a good thing in the end. You know, I mean, you know, we had the freeze year where we opened at, um, at the Ranger stadium and it didn't go so well. Last year's opening weekend didn't go so well. And, you know, look where both of those teams ended up. I mean, it ended up, you know, didn't even think twice about it. So you you get a lot of, you get a lot of information from, from scheduling tough that you may not get uh, when you lighten your load a little bit, you know, beating up on East, West, Northern state, you know, may not do a whole lot for you and you may not learn a whole lot about your team. So I think the benefit you get from scheduling tough, being in tough environments um, typically proves to be um, a good thing in the end. I mean, especially when, if you're in the big 12, um, you know, now when you get into the sec, that becomes a little bit different of a conversation just because of the pure fact that, I mean, (laughs) you're going to play. I mean, multiple top 10 teams one way or another, no matter how your schedule shakes out. Um, And I think, you know, I think it's important to understand that, you know, that'll be something that'll be different for, from being in the big 12, because, you know, being in the big 12, if you're the team that's going to make a lot of noise, it's not very often that you lose two weekends in a row, right? It's just, it just shouldn't happen if you're going to be a dominant team that's going to make a lot of noise in the postseason. Not to say it's never happened, but it's rare. Um, going to the SEC, it's going to happen. You're going to lose two weekends in a row, even if you're the best team in the country. It's just that's just the way life is in the SEC. So making that adjustment as as a program and as a fan base will be it'll be interesting to watch. I think moving forward, but um, you know, ultimately figuring out a way to navigate towards the end of the season, uh, being healthy. Uh, going into the postseason and you know just being hot at the right time I, you know I think everyone probably saw the update to the SEC tournament for next year um, and I think I think those are some good changes you know doing the single elimination um, all the way through because man just you, you go back and look in time it very rarely does a team that wins the SEC tournament uh, go as far as people thought they were going to go in the in the mm-hmm. postseason, just because it's such a grind. Um, and I think this will do something to lessen that load. And I think be a good move in the, in the end run. CJ, you got anything else? No, that was tremendous. <laughs> All right. Well, last question for you. Uh, Drew, yeah. then we'll let you get out of here. And again, we appreciate your time, but if you had to pick one player that may surprise folks, what, you know, I know you mentioned farmer Gasparino, whether it's them or somebody else, who is that player that Texas fans need to be aware of heading into this season that could surprise them the most? Surprise the most? Do I get, is it, am I picking only from newcomers or am I, do I have a chance? Do uh, whatever I, you want to say, you can do anyone. one of each if you want to. <laughs> I'm going to go, I'm going to go with Shaw. I, I just think that, you know, he, we, we saw a lot of positives from him last year. Um, but I think he's just going to play a huge role in this year's bullpen. Um, I think he'll get a lot of high leverage innings. I think the staff trusts him a lot. Um, and, you know, I don't know early on if he's going to be the closer or that just leverage guy that you put in, 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 in big spots. Um, some of that will be dictated by how he does and then how some of the other guys do. Um, but I just think he's going to play a big factor uh, and having him, having him back, you know, I think, you know, that, that hurt a lot losing him last year, uh, kind of in an underrated way, but I, I think he's going to be a guy that's going to prove to be a really positive. Um, I don't know if it's a surprise, but I think he's going to have a big impact on the team this year. 
That's big for me. Bullpen's always my biggest question mark when it comes to Texas teams, just because, you know, you hear about the, the high end arms, the big bats, who are going to be those guys that take kind of the lesser roles or the more important roles in the back end of that bullpen. So that's, that's a, that's a good sign for me. I'm, I'm really encouraged by that, but, but yeah, thank yeah. you again, yeah. this has been tremendous. Yeah, no problem. I always enjoy talking about the horns. Um, you know, I love my time there, wish I was still there at times, you know, it's, it's a special place for me. I grew up a Longhorn with my dad playing for Coach Royal. So um, it's always been in my blood and always going to be rooting for the program. Well, Drew, before we get out of here, I mentioned Five Tool, the, the, you know, that you're the director of scouting for them uh, now. Can you tell folks out there about Five Tool and what it is you guys do? Yeah. So we, you know, our the main uh, part of our business is, you know, we put on a lot of baseball tournaments uh, where, Home base is here in the Dallas area, um, but we we've grown quite a bit over the past couple of years. You know, we do a lot in California, we do a lot in Arizona, Oklahoma, the Midwest, and we we've started branching up in the Midwest and up in Ohio. Um, and you know, we just continue to grow. So you know, the majority of our business is based on having tournaments uh, throughout the summer and fall. Um, we started a new website about this time last year that's really taken off. So that's kind of been a, a big push for us is getting more and more content on there. Um, I think kind of the thing that we're known for most is our video. Um, we video a lot. Of, I mean, every one of our games. Um, and then we also, you know, we've started going to a lot of high school games and just having a presence in the spring. So uh, a lot of baseball. Um, which, which I love, you know, made the transition from moving home a little bit easier for me, but, but yeah, it's, um, you know, we want to provide a, a way for kids to stay in the game and, uh, provide events that are going to be some quality for them. And, uh, from a, you know, quality of play fields, uh, recruiting, uh, standpoint. So, uh, yeah, it's a lot of baseball for us still. All right, Drew. Well, thank you so much for joining us today and giving us an in-depth preview. And uh, we'll have to get you back on, man, whether it's coffee yeah. or football or something. And maybe yeah. as, as the season progresses, get you on and get your thoughts. Yeah, I'm, I'm always in. I'm always down to talk football, too. Right? That's, my, <laughs> that's, my, that's my hobby. Texas football has been my hobby since I was little. So, uh, well, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, for, for Drew and CJ, I'm Blake Monroe, and we'll see you next time.